Well, uh, today our topic is uh, very simple and the basic, but very important model in economics. And that's what we call it as the supply and the demand model. So although it's very simple and uh, every common people can also understand that idea that uh, why the prices of some products are increasing or the uh, price is going down and they know that uh, it is because of increase in demand or it is because of in decrease in supply. So that's a, a thing that we wanna discuss uh, in today's chapter. So let's I share with you the PowerPoint, and then we move on to uh, topic one by one. So, so as I told you that the topic is demand, supply, and the price. So this is the whole idea. Um, in economics, we call it as a bread and butter for the economist because every analysis started with the basic idea okay, well, uh, in the market, if there is any change, why this changes, it can be because of the uh, supply change or because of the demand change, or maybe that is not also possible, but both are changing at the same time. So let's start, uh, we're uh, we focus uh, on demand. Uh, what is demand? So demand uh, is uh, the, uh, any, product or service any person is willing to buy. Uh, and the second condition is that they are able to buy. And the third condition is that they are uh, planning to buy. So these are the thing, uh, three things all together make something as a demand. Uh, so there is a, uh, you, you must clear in your mind that there's a difference between the desire, the want, and the need these are the three things which we can change inter interchangeable, uh, but the demands are different. Uh, demands are only the desire or a need or, or a requirement is going to be demand if it is, if it is backed by the ability to buy, means that they have the resources. And the second thing is that the, they have a plan, a plan to buy because it's very common. Like if I wish uh, I want to buy a uh, aeroplane, uh, but I can't, why? Because I don't have a resources. Uh, sometimes we uh, we have a resources, we want to buy, but we say, okay, we will buy later on. So that's the reason uh, that these three must elements must be there to make a, a demand. Now, uh, when we analyze uh, demand and supply, one basic assumption we made is that the market is a competitive market. Competitive market means that there are many buyers and many sellers and no one can influence uh, the market and uh, also the products are very of a homogeneous nature. So that's these are the characteristics of a, uh, a competitive market. Uh, but we are just uh, at this point of time, it is uh, enough to know uh, for you guys to that the market is a competitive market. So competitive means uh, just like a competition of any other when there are many uh, players or many uh, uh, producers uh, are there in the market to sell their products. Now, quantity demanded. Quantity demanded is a very specific quantity that the buyers are ready to buy at a particular price. So the total amount that consumer desire to purchase in some time period is called the quantity demanded of a product. And it is different. It is different uh, than the actual purchases or exchange take place. Uh, because the the demand, when we uh, summarize uh, in the shape of curve or in the shape of uh, data, uh, we find many uh, data, uh, data points. Uh, but uh, the actual uh, exchanges uh, are one out of these all data points. So that's why we say the demand is, uh, the quantity demanded is something different than actual purchases. Uh, different in the sense that uh, actual purchases out of uh, these all the data points or all the combinations that are possible that uh, the consumer is buying. So uh, quantity, uh, uh, now in, in a one other concept, if we want to explain, uh, we call as a one, uh, one concept as a stock and flow concept. So quantity purchased or bought or, uh, or uh, exchanged is a stock 
concept like at a particular time period how many goods are purchased uh, but uh, the quantity demanded is a flow concept that it reflects that okay if this is the price this much is the quantity demanded uh, if this is the price the quantity demand so it's over a period of time the quantity demanded is changing as the price is changing so that's a uh, thing we can learn it also that uh, what's the difference between uh, the actual uh, quantity purchased or bought uh, and the quantity demanded so that's a flow and the uh, concept of now the relationship between the quantity demanded and the price is a is a relationship which is a, a universally truth and that's why we call it as a law of demand uh, what the law of demand is saying that if everything else is constant or ceteris paribus that every other element in the environment is not changing then when the quantity demanded is negatively related to the price and it's intuitive it's a common sense as well like if the price is increasing and all other things are same it's not changing uh, like the uh, all uh, factors that can influence the uh, the quantity demanded uh, is not changing then we say that the relationship purely the relationship between the quantity demanded and the price is inverse or negative now the question is why they are usually uh, why it is this because uh, normally most of the products have a substitutes uh, that that can satisfy a given want or a desire not that product so if the price this increase the people will buy the other ones right so a reduction in the price of a product means when the price decrease what is happening that specific desire can now be satisfied more cheaply by buying more of the product so that's the main logic that when the prices go down we buy more of a product now when we represent this uh, relationship this relationship now what is the relationship the relationship between in the quantity demanded and price uh, with the data that's what we call it as a demand schedule or uh, here we have a demand schedule for apples so these are the prices like price uh, 20 uh, per bushel or 40 60 80 100 and the quantity demanded at the same uh, at, at these different prices are different like when the price is 20 the demand and the quantity demanded for the apples are 110 and when the price go uh, go up like from 20 to 40 the quantity demanded decrease from 110 to 85 so this is an uh, arbitrary uh, uh, quant uh, data uh, we designed to reflect that relationship but for any product or service you can find the same relationship uh, of price and quantity demanded so when we plot this uh, <clears throat> data uh, along uh, the curve uh, along the axis like uh, price on y-axis and quantity demanded on uh, x-axis so we get a curve and that curve is a uh, demand curve and as the relationship is negative between these two elements so the, the definitely the, the the curve we are getting is a downward sloping curve so uh, for uh, those who are very uh, new to the economics so please remember that whenever we are discussing about a demand curve for any product it should be downward sloping because the relationship between the price and the quantity demanded is negative now the important point here you know uh, know that when what when we are saying the quantity demanded and the relationship between the price and the quantity demanded uh, so we are using the word quantity demanded so very carefully you when we plot this demand curve on one axis is a price on the other axis is quantity demanded so whenever there is a change in price what we what is going to happen the quantity demanded will increase or decrease according to that curve and that cause a movement along the curve like uh, up and down on that particular curve uh, right uh, but there is a possibility that other factors which can uh, influence or which can uh, change uh, the things can change uh, and that's what we call it as a other determinants or the variables other than price now if we uh, very uh, very technically if you look at this graph the graph is on a 
paper and on a paper we can only draw two dimensional graphs so this one dimension is price and the other dimension is quantity demanded if any other variable is changing which is not possible to draw on a two dimensional paper then what is going to happen like we can present that by shifting the the curve the shifting the curve uh, the the curve initially is at one point and we can shift it to the right or to the left now what are those elements that can shift the demand curve uh, <clears throat> these are the first one is a consumer's income consumer's income like if income increase the uh, the consumer is buying more of that the demand for that good is increasing so that's going to shift the curve to the right if the consumer income decrease the comes the demand curve shift to the left so that has an impact the other one is a price of our other goods or related goods we can say that uh, related good means that there are two types of goods that we can discuss one is that uh, is a substitute for that good uh, and that has a relationship like if the price of a substitute increase the demand will increase for example like uh, if we consider the tea and the coffee are the substitute goods so if the price of a tea increase what is going to happen the demand for coffee will increase right because people think that now it is good time to change or to shift towards the coffee so vice versa it can be possible so the the one thing is like a, a substitute goods the other one is uh complementary goods complementary goods means that when we take together and the example is uh, the car and the gas right so th these type of relationship if there is so if the price of a complementary goods increase the demand will go down because we can use together we cannot use it independently so for that reason if the price of a one product like a complementary goods increase the demand will go down like a gas price increase the car's price will go down or the car's price increase gas price will go down because the demand for gas, uh, cars bill so that's a relationship with the price of other goods uh, consumer preferences definitely consumer preference is a very broad term which we can explain like uh the the fashion the trend uh the taste uh the uh, environment the the weather and all these things that can change the demand like in summer the demand for cold drinks and ice creams will increase and in winter the demand for coffee and hot drinks can increase so you see that these are this is our preferences are changed uh the fourth one is population definitely with the increase in population demand will increase that cause the shift of the demand curve or the decrease in population can shift the demand curve to the left uh significant change in weather so that is also important in considering the uh, uh the change in uh demand as i mentioned that in a hot weather and cold weather the demands will change uh but consumer preference is also part of that uh, the other thing which uh, we can say is uh, expectations we can also add to this list that expectations so expectations also change the demand now how we can show that uh, the demand is shifting so here is a table uh, or a schedule that reflects that uh, the demand for we just we discussed we extending this example like the demand for apples we we saw in our schedule before uh with the change in price with the increase in price that the demand for apples are decreasing but what we are assuming here one uh, the the third variable uh that the average income average and annual income in that particular area or a region or uh, country or uh, economy is fifty thousand dollars so with a fifty thousand dollar income the quantity demanded with that price is reflected by the curve here d naught d zero right and imagine the income increase for that uh, population or for that particular region or area or a city or a country whatever it is uh, from 50 to 60. so we notice that the the price at the same price of twenty dollars uh the the demand before when the average income was fifty thousand now uh the the quantity demanded was 110 now with the change in income with the increase in income from 50 to sixty thousand, uh the quantity demanded increased by 140 so increased to 140 uh there's a 30 to, uh 30 uh bushels increase 
the quantity demanded because of increase in income. So we see uh, here that X, uh, Y, X, W, V, U, uh, these are the points at the income level of 50. And then we find the other points, which is Y dash, X dash, X, w dash v dash and u dash with the uh, income level of 60 so we see here that this is a, a shift of the curve to the right so uh, in in general when we reflect the uh, these uh, demand curves uh, shift uh, increase in demand is reflected by uh, rightward shift and decrease in demand is reflected by the uh, leftward shift now, the, the point uh, which is important to remember or a takeaway point from this uh, whole uh, discussion is uh, two things. One, one we, we use the word change in demand. The change in demand is due to all the factors, what I explained to you, like the income of the consumer, uh, like uh, <clears throat> uh, preferences, consumer's preferences, like price of related goods, substitute or complementary uh, population, uh, uh, severe change in the weather or expectations. So these are all the factors that change in demand. The word demand uh, is a change in quantity demanded and that cause a shift of the curve, that cause an entire shift of the curve. Either it can be a right or it can be a uh, left depending upon the uh, situation. Uh, but when we use the word quantity demanded, change in quantity demanded, that is only due to one factor and that factor is the price of the product itself, uh, the, its own price. So if the price increase, the quantity demanded decrease, and if the price decrease, the quantity demanded increase. So two things happening. One is shift of the curve, and shift of the curve is due to change in demand, and change in demand is because of all the determinants we discuss uh, as causing a shift of the demand. The other thing is uh, movement along the curve and movement along the curve is because of the change in price and the change in price is cause a change in quantity demanded and that is movement along the curve.